And it's 11 o'clock. Welcome to another edition of Drive Time Radio on a Saturday morning on New Time, 11 o'clock. I'm New York Vinny, and glad that you can be with us on our little radio show that we do every week. Let's talk about cars. What a what a week it is for cars. Well, maybe it isn't a week for cars. I don't know. It's <laughs> you never know with these things. Some weeks you get a lot more news than others. Some weeks you get good news. Some weeks you get bad news. We really got some good news. Uh, for you this week, uh, we're going to talk to in just a couple of minutes a few friend, a couple of friends of mine who have um, who have decided to take an all new vehicle on the Alcan Five Thousand. So they're uh, they're going to take off from Kirkland, Washington, here in a couple of days, and they are going to head up north, north to Alaska, going five thousand miles, all the way up through the Yukon territories, and so on and so forth, and that ought to be wild. And we'll find out from them exactly what they're driving, how they're doing it. Um, they've done it before, and they've done it in vehicles that have been more tested than this, I guess. I don't know. But the um, the vehicle that they're going up in, the Ineos Automotive Grenadier, is an all-new vehicle. They just started printing them and selling them. And they've been tested over a million miles, but still, there still has to be a little bit of trepidation about taking a brand new vehicle up through uh, the Yukon Territory and up to Alaska. And so we will talk to them about that in just a couple of minutes. We also got Yo Vinny, what are you driving this week coming up uh, here in just a minute? And uh, what else do we have? Well, we have a little few uh, nits. And fits for you around the automotive world. It's going to be a little bit of a short show today as I am under the weather a little bit. So I'm going to uh, try to get you as much as I can before I collapse. That's really what it's gonna, what it's going to be about. I'm going to give you all, as much as I can, all of me, before they have to uh, before they have to pull me out of here. Now, pull me out of the studio. Now, I got Daisy back here with me. She's lying down and keeping me company. So. We know that that's going to be a good thing. You know, Daisy will be here. And if I falter in any shape, manner, or form, Daisy will be there to pick me up. And it's nothing like having a friendly dog around to pick you up. So let's get down to some uh, some things that are happening that we can kind of uh, put out there. Uh it's interesting to me that we are now seeing so much more of the um, of the companies saying that, and I, I listen. I think this is the deal here. America is just not ready for electric cars. America is just not ready for electric cars. So if you want to buy an electric car, if you're going to buy an electric car, uh, there's all sorts of, of, of things going on with them. Tesla's dropping their prices. All these other electric cars that are around are dropping their prices so they can sell them. Uh, I mean, there are people who bought a Tesla for $75,000 a year ago that could buy the same Tesla today for $60,000 or in that neighborhood. Um, that's how much a Tesla has gone down. Now, again, you, you you can't look at cars, unless you're buying classic cars, I don't think you can look at cars as investments. I don't think you can say, well, I'm going to buy a Tesla. And, and I think this is something that's been put in people's minds since the pandemic, is that because cars were in such short demand, people started looking at them as investments. You know, how many of the different uh, car companies, car uh, uh, used car companies, run ads to say, we'll buy your car? And they were buying cars for ridiculous prices. I mean, there were reports of people who could buy a car at a dealership, take it home and call Carvana, get on the Carvana computer, and get three or $4,000 for basically driving the thing down the block. Some cases even more on a hot model. So 
the car industry has kind of become skewed. Then, of course, you went through this period where dealers couldn't, wouldn't sell you a car for under MSRP. As a matter of fact, if you went into a dealer to buy a car, it was clearly over MSRP that you were going to pay for it. There was no doubt about it that you were going to pay over MSRP to buy a car. And um, that, to me, pretty much, uh, I mean, that was a trick. Believe me, the car that we road test today, the Honda CRV Hybrid Sport, I was trying to buy for a relative of mine. I spent weeks on the phone, weeks on the phone trying to find one all up and down the West Coast that somebody would sell for, for under sticker price. That's all. I don't want a special deal. I don't want any. I just wanted the car to be sticker price or under. And I'd have been happy with that. I'd have walked away. I didn't want it to be, uh, you know, I didn't want the guy to lose money on it. I didn't want the dealership to... Uh, I just wanted sticker price. I, I, again, I would have liked to get a discount. But it wasn't out there to be found at the time these people wanted to buy the car. There were no big discounts out there. Very different now. Now, all of a sudden, these dealers that were acting like... Uh, king of the world are all of a sudden having trouble moving cars off of their lots, especially electric cars, because the interest rates are high, because credit is tightening. The banks, the approval companies that, that approve the loans are tightening. And they're not approved. You may have top of the line credit and may not be able to get a, a good rate on a car. And if you want to spread it out, I don't know why you would, but if you want to spread it out 60 or 72 months, forget about it. It ain't happening. I know one or two of you will be able to get it done like that. But I think the reality of it is, is that it's going to be really tough for you to um, to find that uh, you know that that long term push. So. Uh, if, if you're in the market for a car, I got two things to tell you. Uh, from everything that I read, everything that I see, everything that I, I look at, wait a little bit. If you can wait a month or two, it seems like the curve, the, the, the trend is for prices to go down. If you are looking for a used car, it may be the time to start to look because the prices are going down, the auction prices. Now, that doesn't mean that the dealer on your lot is just going to go out there and knock you down. But if you got a little bit of negotiating power in you, uh, go talk to a dealer, a used car dealer, a reputable one, and see if you can see if you can get a good deal. Uh, again, avoid the buy it here, buy it, uh, pay it here lots. And places like uh, drive time used cars and places like that that are subprime lenders because they'll you'll be paying 25% for your, uh, for your loan. And I know you need a car. I need a car. We all need cars. But 
right now, the way things are going uh, in that neighborhood, in that exciting uh, area of buying cars and selling cars, uh, patience is a virtue right now, and uh, good things will come to he or she who waits. And if you can hang on a little bit with your old car, I think you're going to find um, March and April to be much better months to buy cars. They got a lot of inventory on their lots. The manufacturers are calling them up and asking them to take more. They got to move cars. And it's that plain and simple. And I believe that that's, uh, you know, that that's something that uh, you, you're going to have to really um, pay attention to this year if you are in the market to buy a car. Lots of cool stuff going on. Uh, you know, auto show season is starting to come out. We're going to try to highlight everybody's. Um, everybody's uh, uh, events and stuff like that. Try to get a lot of them on the show so that you know where to go. You know that our home event, the event that I love, is always Shoreline Cars and Coffee. They are there, rain or shine, winter, summer, spring or fall, right there on 175th and Aurora in the parking lot there. There's, uh, they're always, always... Um, out there on Saturday morning with some pretty cool stuff. Uh, congratulations to the Singer Company. If you don't know about the Singer Automotive Company, they um, are a really cool little shop that takes Porsche 911s and just rebuilds them in and out. This is a little project that was started by um, Rob Dickinson. He had a rock and roller. Has uh, 600 employees. And they've, I mentioned them um, I mentioned them because they have just this weekend, it looks like, turned out their 300th Porsche 911. Porsche 911. And these things are some of the hottest cars you'll see. Um, they're, they are sought after. Uh, they do them upright. The uh, 300th Classic Study is a 964-911. And it's a... Uh, 1990 Targo done up in resistance blue with an orange interior, and it is a gorgeous car. I'm sorry I didn't uh, get pictures of it for you, but if you're one of those people that have a Porsche and you have some money and you're thinking about, uh, you know, having it uh, having it restored, having it not just restored, but made better than it originally was, uh, the singer people down in Southern California it's, um, you know, I like what uh, Dickinson said. Uh, he founded this um, company with the aim of uh, celebrating the heritage of this remarkable car. It's one at Le Mans, taking children to school and driven Pacific Coast Highway with the roof down. And I am one of the lucky people who have driven a Porsche uh, down. Um, the Pacific Coast Highway with the uh, top down. Uh, the Sato, Sato Commission. Sato Commission is the uh, is how they want it, I guess, uh, spoken to. But it's uh, a, a phenomenal looking car, and uh, congratulations to them. And if you ever get a chance to take a ride in one of these or go on auto week and take a look at it, it is a uh, spectacular. They're expensive. They're over $500,000. But if you got money and you want one of those cars, 
that nobody else in the block is going to have, uh, the Singer is something that you should, uh, and you want to drive a Porsche. That's the other. Um... <laughs> Listen to some people that just don't like Porsches. I, I know. Actually, I think there's people that like the Porsche. I think there's people that don't like Porsche drivers at times. I think that's the distinction. I may be wrong. But I think that is that is uh, is it. And we think, uh, as I said, we got that out of Auto Week. And that was a great little... Uh, Great little thing. All right, let's uh, let's bring in my friends who are going to join us here in just a second. Andy and Mercedes Lilienthal, I've known them for years. They are uh, such cool people. It's a husband and wife team. They've been together a while, and they, uh, they're nuts about cars. Every time you go to uh, an adventure-oriented Um, event in the Northwest. You usually see one or both of them. Uh, Andy's worked for Warren Winches. I mean, he and Lily Lillian has been uh, is a writer. She's had her work published in the New York Times and uh, in many, many, many other magazines. And I'm proud to say that they're uh, good friends of mine. We belong to the uh, Northwest Auto Northwest uh, Auto. <laughs> Press Association. Well, we appreciate it uh, together. And so they are going to, uh, they have gotten sponsorship from Ineos, which is building a, uh, a designer all-wheel drive, off-road car, truck really, that is a, uh, and, and you know what I like about these people? They're calling them station wagons which I really love. They're calling them station wagons. So let's uh, let's bring them in and talk to them a bit about uh, what we are looking at uh, this morning with uh, them taking off to go somewhere. Okay. And now we will start it live in three, two, one. And welcome back to Drive Time Radio here on a Saturday morning. We get a chance to check in with a couple of old friends who are off to Alaska. Once again, it is the Alcan 500. It's a race that's been going on for years and years and years. And you guys have decided, uh, is this the first time you've done it? No. No, we've done the Alcan 5000. Uh, this is be actually our three t third time, but our second winter rally. Ah, yeah, because they do this in the summer too, right? Yep, we did it in 2022 uh, with Subaru of America and Outback Wilderness in 2022. But uh, right, the this... so weaklings like me could go in the summer. Not although I don't know the conditions in the summer seem kind of crazy too with mosquitoes and all sorts there was of some stuff going serious on. Bugs. Serious bugs. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. Uh, it's not a place where for the for the faint of heart. I don't think. No. No. But yet, this is something that uh, that obviously you enjoy doing. It what what's the appeal of of this race for you guys? I think for me, it's the challenge. Um, you know, for us, we're both automotive journalists, and we love reviewing vehicles and seeing if the vehicles can do it, if we can do it, uh, and learning, failing along the way, uh, recouping, and you know, seeing different parts of the world a lot of people can't see spending time together, meeting other like-minded people. It just marries so many different things we love together. So why not? Right, right, right. You're in, you're in a different vehicle this year, something that we haven't seen too many of in the United States, uh, the Grenadier. Yeah. Tell me, tell me a little bit about the Grenadier. The name comes from a bar in London. That's uh, right. Where does the rest of it come from? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Yeah. So the Grenadier is uh, the first automotive uh, vehicle from Ineos Automotive, which is based uh, in the United Kingdom. The vehicle itself is made in France, right on the German-French border in a town called Hambach. 
And uh, a lot of it was uh, developed with Magnus Steyr. Uh, it's got a BMW inline six turbo engine, three liter, uh, same engine BMW uses in uh, a number of its current vehicles. Same engine that's in the Toyota Supra. It's just retuned. And then uh, it's got a ZF uh, eight speed transmission. So that's a, another German unit. Uh, it's got axles from Carrero, which is an Italian company. They make axles for a whole host of tractor manufacturers, some in, in, including John Deere. So uh, it's a it's definitely a European vehicle, and uh, you know it it also even looks a little bit like a Defender, a Land Rover, old Land Rover Defender, but it's not. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of got that look to it, doesn't it? It's uh, you don't see them in common too much here in the United States. Um, so why do they hand you this one if this is a European vehicle that, uh, that they have designs on maybe you guys proving how good this thing is and then they're going to sell a whole bunch of them here in the United States? Well, they've actually just started selling them in North America as of maybe close to a month ago. Um, they are exceedingly um, kind of surpassing the reservation orders for North America, for both Canada and for uh, the US. And that's what they were expecting. Um, Europe and Australia were very strong markets for them and are still strong markets, but they knew that tapping into the market here, North America was gonna be strong and it's following suit. So, um, you know, I've actually been uh, keeping pace with the auto manufacturer when the very first hand built prototype was uh, flown over here and uh, arrived on the shores down in Houston, Texas a couple of years ago and had the chance to go over and drive their prototypes off-road in France. Then I uh, flew over and actually drove the Euro, the European spec vehicles in Scotland for the global launch. Uh, let's see, that was in January of 2023. And now the US spec version's finally making it here. And now it's Andy's turn to actually drive that uh, in a competitive level. So, what is, is is there any trepidation? Is there any uh, uh, concern about getting a vehicle that's? I, I mean, they're unproven. They're proven to a point, mm -hmm. but this is a you know a new vehicle. Is there any any uh, trepidation about taking a vehicle like this on a long trip? Yeah, I think that's a, a really fair question. You know, this is a new vehicle, the first model year, the first model, and so. Uh, you know, I, I can sleep okay at night knowing a the engine is is not some brand new thing that has never been tested. It's a it's a proven engine. Uh even and the drive line is as well. It feels very solid. Uh you know, we're bringing along tools, we've got the manual, and we've got people from Inyos in case we do need, you know, to talk to them, uh, you know, that we, we can talk to to just in case. So um whenever it's not your own vehicle and you haven't been all over it and turned every bolt and nut on it y'all there's always a little bit of like i'm not really sure um but i'm not That's i'm not certainly not losing sleep over it no and i mean in one thing that Ineos automotive has done is um they they said that they've done 1.1 million miles of severe duty testing on these vehicles so whether it's the heat of death valley or the scandinavian uh countryside in the middle of the arctic up there above the arctic circle uh doing winter testing uh, they've said that they've done a ton of testing. So uh, for us, we feel that comfort and a lot of OEMs do it, but um, you know, hey, we're here to test it. So let's see what, what happens. Why do you guys, um, and we're talking to Andy and Mercedes Lilienthal, who are my adventurer friends. They adventure <laughs> all over the place, but they're also car riders, automotive riders and critics and so on and so forth. And also members of our NOAPA uh, press association. Um, mm -hmm. Tell me about the race. What what turned you on about doing this race? You've done it before. This is the winter version of it. What turns you on about going, what is it, 5,000 miles from a nice mm -hmm. warm bed to a freezing igloo somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> In 10 days. Yeah. We, all yeah. there is to eat is whale blubber. So, yeah. um, but you know, I, I peanut butter packet. I think that, yeah. <laughs> I think that uh, uh, for me, you know, we we tried road rally for the first time in about 2018, just a local with our local club, the Cascade Sports Car Club, Gear Grinders, and um, I think that it uh, combines uh, travel, it combines competition, it's approachable. You don't have to have a supercar, you don't have to have a thousand horsepower, you know, 
crazy vehicle to do it. You can do it in any vehicle. Um, and then there's this little bit of adversity with the weather and, yeah, uh, but then you're doing it with a whole bunch of other people who are wanting to do this for the same reasons. And and people of all ages can do it too. I mean, there are mothers and daughters. There are people that are, you know, 80 years old. There are people that are 13 that are navigators. I mean, anybody can do it. That's what's cool too. Yes, it's something I've always wanted to do. And one of these years, I got to, I keep saying that one of these years and the years are getting shorter, yeah. but uh, one of these years, I got to get up there and do it. It just seems like a, like a fun event. What's, what what is the the thing that um that scares you most about doing it and mm. that you get happiest about doing it mm. for me i guess what scares me the most um polar bears i was just going to say yeah. the the wildlife <laughs> um the wildlife is they're huge uh moose caribou bison um they're unpredictable uh you know, you always have to constantly watch. And up in the Arctic, yeah, they don't have sense of the humor. They're, they're, they're not <laughs> yeah, humor. yeah, right, right. They, they don't care if you're in a, you know, in a BMW or an Ineos Grenadier. I mean, they will, you know, they're and, just going to jump out. They're going to come out. And and the thing is, is the winter rally is dark almost all the time. And when the sun does come up, it's really low on the horizon when it comes across. So even when it's sunny out, sorry, <laughs> um, even when it's sunny, it's still low and it's still not full bright. So. Um, you really have to watch wildlife. Um, and what, let's see, what was the second part? The happiest part? Being yeah. along with everybody. Just learning and um, learning. You always learn. You constantly learn, even when you make mistakes, you know, and everybody makes mistakes. I'm the navigator. Andy's the driver. We always say, I'm going to get him lost. He might get us stuck. You know, we might ditch dive, hopefully not. But, um, you know, it's all part of the challenge. And I love that. And for me, pushing my boundaries, that's what, it, that's where it is. I know for me as a, as a driver, it's it, it. The answer is similar. I I my you know fear is obviously like some sort of wreck. You know when yeah. it's when it's forty five below zero, that's just not good. Um, and and then the happiest thing is I just think you know being on the road with with Mercedes and and competing with her and and um, and also traveling with just other like minded people, fringe lunatics who like to do this stuff too. Yeah, I mean I would have to think it's like a whole bunch of people that see things a lot the same way as far as driving and this mm -hmm. and that um and and have a common cause and that's to get there yeah right survive yeah yeah now you're gonna be able to sleep in the vehicle is it is it long enough or big enough or you're gonna stop in hotels every night yeah we we have accommodations along the way there's motel, motels motels <laughs> yeah um we use that yeah. term some lightly. of them are nicer than others but uh <laughs> Uh, you know, it's not white glove service, but anyway, 1970s, you know, paneling and uh, it depends. Some might of be place the place to sleep, right? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Place to sleep. They're, place to sleep. They're, they're clean, they're generally quiet, yeah. and uh, um, people are super friendly. Yeah, we're not camping, we're not sleeping <laughs> no, in the vehicle. No. Uh, yeah, the point is definitely not to sleep in the vehicle. Yeah, the point is to stay alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would think that's and that's a very good point because we'd like to do a post interview, and if you know yeah, you don't yeah. stay alive, it makes it tougher. To <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'd love to be back on the show. <laughs> yeah, we're knocking on wood that uh, that everything is going to work out okay. So you feel comfortable about this vehicle, right? Even though first time you're you're driving it, not not you, Mercedes, but Andy's driving it the first time, and and you'll be able to, I'm sure, show him some stuff and and. The manufacturers have been good about parts and stuff like that, supplying yeah. stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Ineos has been fantastic with pretty much every question we've had. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it is a new vehicle. It's got a different inter infotainment system than, you know, uh, you know, another vehicle or anything we own. So, you know, we have had questions and they've always had answers. And we have a local dealership, actually. We live in Portland, Oregon, and uh, RTGT, so Ron Tonkin Grand Turismo out of Wilsonville, Oregon, has been exceptional, too. They took receipt of the vehicle once it got delivered, and they did the final prep on it, and uh, and they've been exceptional, too. Uh, so we can't ask for, for better support. Okay, now I'm thinking you're driving up this highway. This is a 5,000-mile highway. Where do you start? Uh, Kirkland, Washington. Near Seattle. Kirkland. Kirkland, Washington. Okay, so right across the uh, the lake. So you're going to have satellite radio, mm -hmm. probably all the way up to Canada at least, and probably mm -hmm. part of the way through Canada. Yes. So now you're on the Alcan Highway. You're driving up there, and the satellite all of a sudden goes. Mm -hmm. Do you a 
start singing songs of your youth. <laughs> uh, B, brought like a ham radio or something like that to listen to other people. Or um, sing, your, uh, sing your wedding song to each other until you... <laughs> Until you get to uh, uh, all the way up to where does this end now? In in uh, Anchorage, uh, Anchorage, Anchorage, Alaska. <laughs> which, that, uh, which is it? And that that's actually that's a great thing. It'd be funny because I think a lot of our uh, wedding songs and stuff like that were actually jazz music. Um, so it'd be interesting to see Andy try to sing Miles Davis. So yeah, I don't know about yeah, that. probably probably not a good idea. <laughs> but you're um, right; it does but, cut off. It, the it satellite does, yeah. cuts off somewhere around, mm -hmm. I believe, southern Yukon territory. And, and and so for us, uh, oddly enough, we are fringe lunatics, but we are kind of oddball in the fact that we don't listen to music hardly at all when we drive. Um, we kind of let the road speak to us or we just talk or it's just kind of silence in the car. So um not sure, but the bringing up the radios aspect of it. So that's probably not the answer you're looking yeah. for, Vinny. But um, no, no, so, no, no, no. I, I mean, I, you know, because when my, if I lose satellite or I go somewhere where there's no reception, you know, I have a, like a ten or fifteen songs that I sing. You yeah, know, right, I, right. You know, so, I just want to keep my keep my mind out. Yeah, I have. Uh, you know, try to do "Taste of Honey" if you can. That's a good. You know, the Herb Alpert version when I go. Oh yeah. Well, you know, you bring up a good point about radios. Um, so we've got rugged radio R1 handhelds, and um, we decided to have two of them. Every car, especially during the winter, were mandated to run an emergency frequency. So, and then we also have buddy cars. And um, during the winter, especially, you have three to four vehicles that kind of stay in a pack, and then you run your own frequency with that. So, uh, everybody makes sure that everybody else is okay. And then they have a sweeps team. The Alcan 5000 rally is very careful to make sure that there's sweeps teams at the end in case anybody needs to get pulled out of ditches or, if, God forbid, if there's an accident or something. They're very, very prepared that way. Um, this is the 40th year of the anniversary of the rally, started in, um, in I almost said 1884. It's a long <laughs> Not, time 1984. ago. 1984. Um, so it's the 40th year of the rally circuit. So, um, but it's great. I mean, everybody talks to each other, and that helps keep people awake too. So, yeah, without without a doubt. Now, um, what uh, is there a prize for the winner? Is there do you, you get like a uh, hundred thousand dollars and <laughs> flown back on a private jet or something or? <laughs> bragging rights so. it's, it's mostly <laughs> bragging rights so yeah. and, that, and that's okay so yeah. uh uh you know we don't do it for the glory there are, um, there are awards there are like plaques and there there are awards and things yes there are various different kinds of awards for mm -hmm. different uh i mean obviously if you win you get a trophy and but mm -hmm. there are other sub awards like there's uh one they did last year called gravel travel which was who did the most miles on gravel and they have we did other other ones oh, yeah. that uh, <laughs> and like there's other, other there's art th or there's um optional routes too so for example there's a i guess you would call it a, a down day or an optional day up in fairbanks where you have the choice of going through the very relaxing chain of hot springs and and soaking in their in their pools or you can drive 500 extra miles up to Coldfoot, which is a fuel depot halfway to the arctic ocean now, if you do that, I think you get more points. So we're probably going to do that. So probably. Uh, I'm going to take the hot springs. Probably. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> probably. Um, okay. Of course, we're going to do that. Yeah. A, a final question: How many electric cars are entered this year? None. None. There's this never year. been an electric car yet. I want to be the first. I need to do some convincing, at least for uh, the summer rally. I think we're going to need a little bit of a grid infrastructure update before we can do the Alpha. Yeah, yeah. In a, in an you EV. Think we'll eventually do this race, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, you know, I think we'll we'll definitely see PHEVs do it because uh, they'll they'll still have the gas engine. Right. But, uh, haven't had the EV yet. Well, I'm I'm pushing for you to get the EV some year, and maybe some year you'll even take me along with you. Hey, yeah. you never know. Hey, I've done an EV, uh, 1,500 miles off road for the Rebel Rally. So, hey, you never know. Yeah. Al Camp, I got my eyes set on you for the, at least summer. <laughs> Guys, have a good trip. Have fun. I know that uh, we'll be. Is there a place, a uh, website that we can keep an eye on where you'll be? Yep, absolutely. Crankshaftculture.com, and then our associated Instagram. And Facebook pages, which are both just at Crankshaft Culture. We might be on Twitter a bit at, at Crankshaft Cult as well. 
And basically with me being the co-driver, I'm going to post daily. So I'll have a lot of Instagram stories that will flood over to Facebook. And I'm going to do my best to do daily reels for all the rally happenings. So right. you'll be able to see things as they go along. And then we'll have tons of post-rally coverage, articles, podcasts, radio shows like yourself and more. Yeah. Also Absolutely. check out our YouTube channel. Yeah, YouTube right, we'll too. Yeah. This, I'll put your links. Yeah, I'll put your links down below the uh below this. Guys, good luck. Thank you very much. And thanks for taking the time to do the interview. Thanks, Thank Vinny. So Appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having us on again. All right, good to see you guys. Take care. All right, there you go, Mercedes and Andy Lilienthal, who are uh, taking off for the Great North, the Great White North on uh the 27th. And that ought to be a lot of fun. 27th or uh, anyway, uh, it'll be great fun that Alcan 500 race is just uh, I mean, I've read about it for a few years. I, I've, I've always wanted to drive, I guess. I don't know if I want to do the Alcan 5000. I think I'm much more suited toward the uh, you know, the road up to uh, Alaska. That might be the way I would want to go, is just to take that road. I, I do want to drive to Alaska, the Yukon Highway. I, I think that's more my uh, my speed. But uh, God bless them that they're going up there. I did say are going to do that. All right, let's do, uh, yo, Vinny, what are you driving this week? Because uh, I'm driving something a little different this week. Driving something I don't usually drive this week. Look at this. I'm driving something that you wouldn't believe it is a Toyota Sienna hybrid minivan. That's right. I'm a minivan guy this week. I'm going to actually have to go pick up my daughter and strap her in a car seat. I don't know how she's going to like that at 31 years old. But uh, I'm going to pick her up and strap her in a car seat and take her for a ride in the Toyota Sienna minivan. Uh, you know, this is like the standard almost. Uh, I know that the, uh, the the Chrysler Pacifica is probably is the best. You know, many people say is the best. Um, the uh, you know also there's a few others out there, uh, but this is the one that gives you the uh, the best fuel economy in the class, and um, it's got a bit. You know, it, it it lacks in a few of the interior configurations. To be honest with you, I haven't gone over the whole thing yet. So I'm going to take it this weekend and give it a good test, give it a good ride, see what it does well, see what it doesn't do well. But many people that love these uh, vehicles, many people that love minivans, uh, say that this is the one, that it's quiet, that for what it does, it leads to class. And it's hard to argue with that. As a matter of fact, if you look at it, uh, you know, there's only really four minivans out there that you can buy. Uh, if you go out and you look at the, the, mini uh, the minivan class, these are the ones that, uh, you know, that you're going to get a chance to, uh, to, you know, to look at. There's only four Pacifica Carnival uh, the Odyssey and the Sienna, uh, both equally priced, or actually all of them equally priced, all four equally priced. Uh, I kind of like some of the design language on the Toyota. It looks a little racy for a minivan, a little bulky. You know that 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 Toyota back uh, that that haunches on the back just kind of give it a little something, a little something. So if you like minivans, uh, stay tuned. Next week, we'll have the full report on the minivan. Uh, this is another edition of Yo, Vinny, What Are You Driving This Week? Uh, certainly a spectacular car. And um, we'll have to see what the sleepability in this thing is. That's the Maybe tonight, take it up. Looks like it might be a clear night. Go do some stargazing through the sunroof. But uh, certainly... You know, everything you want, nothing, it, it's not going to be a fancy, fancy experience for you. You know, this is going to be the family hauler. Uh, the, uh, you know, it's a shame because these were really replaced in many ways by SUVs. But, you know, in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, these were the, uh, these were what people hold their family around in. 
And luckily, there's still four manufacturers that think that there's a, a market out there for them. And from what I understand, there is. I don't know exactly what the sales figures are, but I think that there are uh, there are sales figures out there that say that uh, they're still strong. Otherwise, uh, you know, I don't think Kia would be in the business of making one, that's for sure. But they are. Their carnival is good. But this is the Toyota Sienna Hybrid. That's right, hybrid. Goes a certain amount of, it's not a plug-in, uh, gets about 280 horsepower, something like that, 285 horsepower. From the uh, from the hybrid combination, uh, sharp-looking vehicle, fairly easy to drive. We'll give you more on it next week. All right? That is your week. That's what we are looking at there. <laughs> I love it when I get to drive a minivan. You know, you pull up into Dick's on a Dick's driving on a on a Saturday night in a minivan, and people look at you. What is that? You know, these young kids that don't know what uh what a minivan is. They're all always trying to learn. Everybody's trying to learn. All right, uh, so we we have that, and then um, as I said, we're probably going to cut the show a little bit short today. Because I am just under the weather, man. My head is in a cloud. I am, uh, let's see, I'm getting our, uh, our, uh, yo, Vinny, what are you, uh, no, I, we just did that, uh, our review of the week. And I can do my review of the week pretty simply, uh, with the, uh, with the yo, Vinny that we had for the, uh, the same vehicle because I love this vehicle. Uh, so much. This is a great vehicle that we're going to talk to you about now. This is uh, the Honda 24 Honda CRV. And yeah, we thought we had it. Try it again. Okay, we we have a technical problem, which is uh, I probably shouldn't tell you that it's a technical problem because it's my problem, uh, but it happens every once in a while. Let me see if we can quickly remedy it, and if we can, we will. Because we like to remedy things if we can, so. If you will bear with me one minute, we'll and remove that, and we'll remove that, and make way for. Okay, just give me one more second to uh, see if I can get this uh, together in the way that I wanted it to. And uh, hopefully, okay, there we go. And let's see if this works. No, for whatever reason, it's not. Uh, Okay, there we go. Let's see. Do that, and let's see if this cranks it up. All right, here you go. Sorry about that. Like I said, I'm a little bit under the weather today. Taking a bit of a cold on. But every time you have, every once in a while, it's live. It's a live broadcast, and you get those uh, types of situations that happen, unfortunately. But we are looking at. 2024 Honda TRV Hybrid. This is a great vehicle. It sits on top of most list of the best uh, hybrid wagon you can buy out there. So many people love this thing. So many people rank it at number one. It's, uh, it, it, it is um, really the, the top of the line, especially in its uh, sport hybrid. Uh, 
in sports hydrate configuration. Now, you look at the interior here, great room in the interior for doing whatever you want. Well appointed uh, black seats with orange stitching that really make the, uh, the interior on this thing uh, zinc, it pops. It, you know, it really does pop at you. And uh, nice wide screens so that you can see everything. The vehicle is comfortable to drive. Plenty of leg room inside as well. As you can see, a couple of ports there for the, um, you know, who you have in the back seat to plug stuff in. Uh, cargo room, it's among the biggest with the back seat up. Or if you drop the back seat, you even get a more voluminous uh, area to ride in. As uh, as I said, the uh, you get a combined total here of 204 horsepower. Uh, the uh, 60 mile an hour numbers on this thing go uh, from zero to uh, 60 in 7.9 seconds. That's not bad. Has decent uh, descent control that helps uh, keep the speed safe uh, if you're going down a hill, especially a slippery hill, traveling low speeds. And with the um, the 19 inch wheels that you get, it, uh, it 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 rides well. I thought it was a very very nice riding car, very solid riding vehicle. It uh, as I said, lots of space in the back, smooth car to drive, but yet it has enough oomph. The only thing that I would say about this car, uh, on a negative side, that if you are looking for a sports handling car, okay, if you're one of those people that want to buy a hybrid wagon, but you're looking for that. That little bit of thrill of driving baked into the car. You want something that gives you the thrill of driving uh, when you, uh, you know, when you're on that lonesome road and you're, you know, you say, oh, "I want to get into this thing a little." This probably isn't the car for it. I don't think you'll find a better car to get you from point A to point B. It is somewhat fun to drive, um, but it gives you. Uh, it gives you that rock solid feeling. I mean, with this Honda, you know that you're going to get out there and you're going to put the key in the ignition and it's going to start and it's going to do what it's supposed to do. It's going to go to Costco and pick stuff up. It's uh, it, it's going to do, it's going to perform for you as you need it to perform. And I know this for a fact. And by the way, the 1,500 pound towing capacity, so you can pull uh, well, so it's only a thousand though on the hybrid, but fifteen hundred if you get the gas version. And uh, as I said, comfortable vehicle to drive. Uh, lots of nooks and crannies and bins and storage places. And um, again, I just think that this car, uh, especially when you factor in the comfort of driving, when you factor in the safety equipment. And when you factor in the warranty and complimentary schedule scheduled maintenance for two years at 24,000 miles, it's hard to beat the Honda. It really is. It's hard to beat the Honda no matter how you slice it up. Matter of fact, they're so good that my sister-in-law bought one. Uh, she who I was talking about a little earlier, looking around for the car and everybody wants over, over, over sticker. But if you wait it out, you find somebody that's a fair and honest dealer, and they don't want to charge you over, over, over sticker. You get a close to sticker, if not sticker. And that's a, and that's a good thing. So the Honda, uh, I think the, the uh, cost on this thing, if I'm not mistaken, I, I don't have the, the Monroney in front of me, but the cost on this thing was somewhere around $38,000, $39,000. Now, if you don't want to go for the hybrid, there are several other uh, iterations iterations of this vehicle from, uh, you know, the low-dollar two-wheel drive model. So if you don't need the four-wheel drive, you can still find it, uh, which is the LX. And you can ha those can be had for around $30,000. You move up an EX, the Sport Touring Hybrid, which is the top of the line. It's around a 41,550 car. 
but uh, I think the sport L hybrid is one that's going to be very popular around here. It's about 38,400. And I think that that will, that will pretty much put you where you want to be. 43 miles per gallon in the city, which beats the RAV4 hybrid. And uh, it's a, if, if you buy it in its higher iterations, if you buy it in a sport during hybrid or a sports L hybrid, um, you get just about everything in there you could want, including all of the safety equipment. It's that simple. It is, uh, without a doubt, if you have a family and you consider safety uh, uh, job number one, and you consider uh, that it's okay if you don't drive a hot rod, it's okay if you dr- just drive a family car, then I think you uh, you're more, would be more than happy driving this, uh, this Honda CRV. Got a long tradition. They're great cars, and I definitely suggest if you're in the market for a family car, this is one you should go out and take a look at. All right, that's going to wrap it up for another edition of Drive Time Radio. As I said, we're running a little short today because I am really under the weather, but I wanted to get the stuff out there to you. We'll uh, see you next week on Saturday morning, 11 o'clock, if the Lord's willing and the creek don't rise. Uh, Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other, and uh, be nice to people. You know, it's uh, it's that time of year. What time of year is it, Vinny? Every time of year is when you should be nice to each other. Take care. Bye-bye.